Everyone wants to be good in a fighting game of their choosing, and when it comes to Tekken, reaching the green ranks is something that allows you to say, yes, I'm at least decent at this game. However, not a lot of people are actually able to do so, seeing how a lot of them are staying in blues forever. Tekken 7 is my first Tekken game, and I recently reached green on it. The pain of blue hell is still fresh in my memory, just like the lessons, the universal ones that are equally good for every character that helped me go through this. And I'm about to share those with you. But first, have you ever thought how you're getting promoted? I mean, sometimes you don't even win most of your games and, oh, promotion. And sometimes you keep winning and winning more than you're losing and no promotion in sight. What the hell? You see, there is a secret point system in Tekken that determines whether you're worthy of promotion or not. Fighting opponents that are stronger than you don't give you more points. Actually, it gives you less points than opponents that are equally the same rank as you. And the same goes for people that are way lower rank than you. In total, you need from 2 to 4 points in order to achieve the next rank. And the easiest way to do so would be to create a win streak of 4 against the players that are the same rank as you. But then again, maybe it's way easier for you to defeat somebody like this 8 times than somebody else. If you're still confused about the ranks, then I found a nice video that you can check out in the description below to get some more in-depth information. But how does any of this actually help you? Well, it helps you to search people correctly. Before entering the warm-up, you have a choice to put on rank restrictions between plus or minus two, plus or minus three, and plus or minus three preferred. We need opponents of the same rank. Obviously, plus or minus two will give you the best chances to fight somebody of the same rank. And don't forget to put on connection quality to four and above. You don't want your promotion to end up like this. Now, let's start from the very beginning. I remember when I was ranking up, the first thing that I ever did in the beginning of the match was just mash my fastest move, and sometimes I got counter hit it. And by that, I was losing my momentum and allowing my opponent to take an upper hand straight from the beginning of the match. I always remembered that in the beginning of the second round. It's good to learn from your mistakes, but it's better not to make them at all. The safest thing to do in the beginning of the match would be simply to dash back. That's it, that's all you have to do. That's not really uncomfortable since somebody can just catch you on a dash by just down one like I do with Steve, but that's still the safest option for you to go with in order to not lose the advantage. And then in later rounds, when you can predict what your opponent is going to do as his first move, you can work out some counter hit moves. Speaking about moves, you know how every character in this goddamn game has over 100 moves and you can't remember them all and that creates problems when you're trying to block something because you don't know whether the string is gonna go low or high or middle? Well, I developed this rule for blocking for myself. Basically, I always block high because most of the launchers are middle and then when I get hit by a low I remember what situation led to me being hit low, so for instance there was a law that liked to use his low whenever I stood up. I remember that and when I stood up the next time I blocked it and punished it, 
The same goes for Brian's. Brian's likes to do this. Throwing out this sudden low starter. So you remember the situation that led to this low starter, and whenever it comes to this situation again, you know that he's going to start up the lows. It's basically the method of predicting when he's going to do that move. You can up it even further and remember some other moves that people tend to do after certain strings, and maybe it will save your life. And then the level above it is dodging every single pattern that your opponent has, creating some cool-ass dodges. Keep in mind that sometimes dodging is very inconsistent in this game and uh, hitboxes seem to waver in favor of your opponent, so yeah, be careful about this. But what if you can't predict anything? Your opponent just pressures you and pressures you with his fast moves going low and high and low and high and you can't seem to do anything when there are three ways to escape the pressure. First one is to use something armored to just stop the pressure dead on, but if opponent knows that you are going to armor and use a slow, he's going to interrupt that. So the second way and the most common one to interrupt the pressure is just to duck high, because most of the fastest moves that character have are highs, and whole highs are duckable. And the third way, the riskiest one, is to insert your own move in the middle of the pressure, which people usually get caught on in the blue ranks because they don't really know the strings. So I didn't really advise this, at least not on this level. The one thing that always messed me up were wake-ups. Basically, I like to add an additional hit whenever opponent is on the ground to just finish him off or deal, you know, additional percent. But some people like to wake up low and that ruins everything because they suddenly get knocked down. And sometimes when I'm waiting for it, they just go for the middle, instead of low, and I'm getting screwed. But if I know for a fact that he's going to wake up low, that leads to a reverse comeback. Generally though, the safest thing is just to step back a couple of steps and try to punish whatever their wake up might be. Or just rage about how fucking safe it is! A couple of words about the rage. You know how whenever people get very low on their health, they get very desperate and they want to land this rage art? And if they do, it does a lot of damage and might cause a comeback? The lesson here is obvious, don't rush things. If possible, bait out the rage art first and then finish them off. If not possible or you don't know if your opponent likes to rage art or not, always keep it in mind. Never get carried away with your attacking. One more thing that I noticed that is universal to every character is that whenever you perform a running attack, the next move is always in your favor because the running attack is always plus on block. So if you see somebody running at you, try to interrupt him instead of trying to block whatever he's coming at you, or if you're feeling lucky, try to dodge it and whiff punish. Speaking of whiff punishing, if you're throwing out a launcher, a safe one, at random, be sure that you're going to at least hit your opponent's block, because most of the launchers are punishable on whiff. And that's about it. The rest depends on your grinding, confidence, and stubbornness to be the best fighter you can possibly be.